we've got race two of the 2024 Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli coming up for you here at Donington Park. If you didn't join us for race number one, uh, why not would be the big question. We saw a win for Mark McAleer, who hadn't led that many laps. Simon Clark did most of the leading, but Mark McAleer closed him down and took the win earlier on today. Simon Clark will start from pole position because this grid is based on the second fastest times that we had from qualifying earlier on today. So he will start once more in the largely white and green car to the right of your screen from pole position. Alongside him, though, will be the man who took the win earlier on today, Mark McAleer. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. So off they go on their formation lap. We've been blessed with, albeit chilly, but good weather all weekend. So let's guide you then through the grid for this second race of the day for the Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. It is Simon Clark that starts from pole position and alongside him is the 997, the similar car of Mark McAleer. Row two of the grid, it's number 11, which is James Cayley, alongside 144, which is Jake McAleer, directly behind his father. Row three of the grid is where we see Pete Morris, number two, alongside Chris Dyer's Porsche Cayman. And row four of the grid is the light blue number 32 car of Ed Hayes that sits alongside number 80, which is Bill Cayley. Row five of the grid, it's the reigning champion, the overall champion and the class two champion from last year, which is Paul Simpson. He's got Richard Baston for company. And row six of the grid, it's Jim Bryan and David Burke that line up on row number six. Row seven, Pete Evans has got Julian Morris for company. And row eight of the grid sees Angus Archer line up alongside Darren Lebet. The ninth row of the grid, sorry, the ninth row of the grid is Sharaz Khan, who's got Paul Seagrove for company, and then it's Brian Richardson that lines up alongside Andrew Porter, who didn't qualify well but raced really well in the amateur class. And row 11 of the grid, Jessica Wilkinson has Cole Hazelton for company. Final row of the grid will be Jason Brown, who lines up alongside Jamie Callender. So that's the order in which they line up for this second 25-minute race of the day for the Porsches. Say so changes to the regulations for this year. We used to have Class 1 and then Class 2. Well, Class 1 is now to be known as the Porsche Club Motorsport Championship with Pirelli, or Class CP as it's also known. And Class 2 is now known as the Porsche Club Motorsport AM Championship with Pirelli, which is the, the AM class. So there are two different classes in this, and the way to identify them, if it's got a yellow windscreen header, it runs in Class CP, the old Class 1. If it runs in the AM category, then it will have a darker windscreen header, a black Pirelli windscreen header. That's the best way to tell the, the two apart. And we did have good battle in the AM class earlier on, so if we get that good battle, we will be picking up on what's going on in there, because... Angus Archer had a, a good look, squabble with Andrew Porter in the race earlier on today and the two of them were not separated by a great deal I don't think in the end as they came over the start finish line yeah it was just a tenth of a second between the pair of them so Marshall's clearing the grid wait for the grid to be fully formed up and then we'll get the green flag at the back and then fingers crossed for the final time today the red lights will come on on the gantry because if they come on a second time that means that the race will be stopped and we don't we've had some really good racing and some very clean and fair racing from all of the porsche categories here this weekend at donnington park and we'll do it all again at brands hatch on the 18th of may so green flag at the back red lights come on 25 minutes of racing and round two of the Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli gets underway. It looks as though it's not a bad start from Simon Clark. It's a good, really good start from Jake McAleer. He's trying to draw himself alongside his father by the look of things as they head up towards Redgate Corner. But it's Simon Clark that leads. It is going to be Mark McAleer in second place. Jake McAleer in third position. Looks like Bill Cayley gets a little bit wiggly and coming out of the corner. Somebody gets turned around, I'm afraid to say. And I think that is going to be Richard Baston that he's pointing in the wrong direction at the wheel of the number 85 car is 996. Uh, now, whether that was cold tyres or a little bit of contact, I don't know, but he will tumble right the way down towards the tail end of the field. No obvious signs of damage. May well just have been a little bit of cold tyres. So, other than that, everybody else has managed to get through the first corner, albeit I've just seen somebody on the grass heading up towards Schwantz Curve that was bouncing around a little bit. So, they will rejoin again, I hope. But that will have cost them a little bit of time. And it is going to be... Ed Hayes, I think. Yes, it is. It's Ed Hayes at the wheel of his Cayman who has shortcut a fair chunk of the circuit. Has he filled those radiator ducts with freshly mown grass? I think he might have done, you know. That is not going to do his car a great deal of good. We've also got another car that's had a spin on the exit of McLean's corner, is stranded in the gravel, and that's Jamie Callender. 
So his car, the front wheels are on the tarmac, or the concrete at least. The rear wheels are going nowhere at the moment. So that car of Jamie Callender with its white, red and black livery is, I'm afraid, going nowhere. Now it's so close to the edge of the circuit, I think a good shove by the marshals might just get that car out of harm's way and prevent the requirement for any sort of safety car. Uh, however, in the background of the shot there, I see the lights have literally just come on on the safety car, which suggests it may well be on standby. And in fact, yes, yes, safety car boards out around the circuit. You can see the yellow flags and the SC boards being held aloft by the marshals. So race control making the decision to bring the race to a controlled status nice and early on. And I think for some of the cars and some of the drivers, they've probably reacted to those safety car boards quicker than others because some still seem to be carrying a fair amount of speed going round through the old hairpin but now they've all seen it because that's the difficult thing you've got all of the cars bunched together all the drivers busy squabbling on the first few laps uh, and therefore you know the marshals post with the best will in the world are in your peripheral vision and sometimes drivers take a, just a, a, a shade longer to react so everybody's now seen them they've all maintained their race positions which you have to do as soon as the safety ball car boards come out and i think this will be a fairly short safety car lap so the safety car lap safety car will pick up Simon Clark on pit lane exit and then I suspect fingers crossed as long as the marshals can give that car a good shove if they can get enough brute force behind it and he hasn't dug the wheels in too much no that's not budging is it we might not need the requirement of a telehandler but no that Porsche is not coming out not even attempting to move is it from there so the marshals have given it a go but telehandler will be required to drag that car out of the way so it's going to be this lap behind the safety car and probably another because of course the telehandler has to come from where it's parked around to hook up on the front of the Porsche briefly drag it forward only a matter of a couple of feet isn't it the rear wheels will be on concrete or tarmac and then of course it has to disconnect and then get back behind the barriers and all of that has to be done in the space of half a lap now which cannot happen so it's going to be at least another lap or two before we can go back green flag racing whilst the clock still continues to tick the early race lead picked up from pole position by Simon Clark from Mark McAleer and Jake McAleer it was going to be race one retiree that was next up which was going to be the number 11 car which is James Cayley in fact I'm not sure he even got going in race number one James Cayley because I think the car might have had a problem and can't even see him on the results at the end of race number one which suggests that he wasn't a retirement he just didn't start so he sits there in fourth place Pete Morris is fifth wheel of the number two car then it's nine Chris Dyer ahead of Bill Cayley in number 80 car that's seventh eighth is num number 22 which will be Pete Evans won't it uh, ninth place is Jim Bryan at the wheel of the 74 and completing the top 10 is car number 26 which is David Burke now all of those cars run in the main um, CP class or the main championship class if you want to look for who is leading the AM category and it will be number 44 Andrew Porter that leads that at this stage down in 14th position 15th place is the second of the AM cars which is Darren Labet and third will be Angus Archer the wheel of the number 70 car so that's the top three in the AM category so you can tell them apart by the windscreen headers yellow windscreen headers for the main championship class for the AM class then it is black windscreen headers and as I mentioned earlier on you are limited for the amount of tyres that you can utilise over the course of a weekend so if you're in class one you get one set of tyres per race meeting so you've got to see you through qualifying and through two 25 minute races if you're in class two you get one set of tyres every second race meeting so they have to see you through four races and two qualifying sessions that set of Pirelli's so a bit of weaving being done to maintain some tyre temperature say it's a sunny day but it is chilly out there so if you can maintain a bit of tyre temp and some brake temp as well that will all bode you well for whatever will remain of this race by the time we get it going I think the recovery of the car backwards through the gravel trap has been sorted Jamie Callender may well be able to drive that car back round to the pit lane area and may be allowed to rejoin in the race but at the moment until the safety car gets up to that point of the circuit we won't get a real visual idea and indication as to how close we are to going back racing whether it could be at the end of this lap or not 
So safety cars just going up to the entrance to McLean's now. It was the exit where the car had the off, so we know it's not in the gravel where it was anymore. But have we got the marshals out of harm's way? We'll probably find out when the safety car extinguishes its lights, and it would usually do that roughly where the Dunlop Bridge used to be, so about half the way, three quarters of the way down the straight after Coppice Corner towards the exhibition centre, but just before it is where we will see it. Right, we can see the cars out of harm's way. I can see the telehandler was behind the barriers as well, which does suggest the lights will go off on the safety car any second now. They should be extinguished if we're going to go racing at the end of this lap. It gets a little brow. Do they go off? No, they're still illuminating. No, there we go. It gets a little brow. Now they turn them off. And that's roughly where the Dunlop Bridge used to be which means that Simon Clark can now decide as to when he wants to get things back underway. So he is looking to try and accelerate as soon as he can, going in towards the Robert Chicane. So there we go. Once he's gone on the gas, he won't want to get back off it. So Simon Clark, good restart from him as he heads over the start-finish line. The 997 Carrera S leads the way from Mark McAleer in second position. So Mark's won class one of this championship in a range of different cars over the years the 968 the 996 the 997 so the championship continually evolves of course we've now got some of the gen 2 cars coming into it more of those destined to join the championship as well as it goes on over the course of this season with new cars in build all of the time his son jake mcaleer completes the top three at the moment and then it's james cayley at the wheel of the green car with the gold flashes that's there in fourth position currently Julian Morris we're looking at at the moment. He is in the light green car. Julian, who we've seen racing Boxsters in the past. 17 minutes of the race to go. Everybody trying to get everything back up under temperature once more. Chris Dyer's got his hands rather full in sixth position. He got Bill Cayley right behind him, and then Bill Cayley was coming under pressure from Pete Evans in the Dayglow yellow and black machine. In the AM category, it was Andrew Porter that was leading that, wasn't it? whilst we were under the safety car period. Hopefully he's been able to hang on to that lead of the race. There's number 15, that's Shiraz Khan. He's running fourth in the AM category at the moment. As over the start-finish line comes the race leader. A new fastest lap of the race with the car in second place, which is Mark McAleer. So the race one winner. So he just got quicker towards the end of the race earlier on today. Maybe the set upon his car or the starting tyre pressures on it. Just meaning that he was able to get quicker as the race wore on and a bit like we saw in the race earlier on today it's the 997s that seem to have the upper hand around the Donington Park National Circuit because it's 997s first second third fourth and fifth in the race with the first of the Caymans down there in sixth currently and the leading 996 is down in ninth place which is the number 74 car the grey and green car of Jim Bryan Chris Dyer with his hands very full indeed he's got Bill Cayley crawling all over the tail end of him and Bill Cayley is not going to try anything as they head up towards the braking area for McLean's this time through. Watch out, any mistake at all, and Pete Evans in his lurid Dayglow car is poised and ready to pounce. Through Coppice Corner goes Chris Dyer, still pressing on. Chris, I think, is another one who's former champion, scooped up the championship at least once in his class, that's for sure. But at the moment, he's got enough daylight between himself and Bill Cayley that he doesn't need to worry. So they flick their way through the Robert chicane over the start-finish line. With 15 minutes to go of the scheduled 25. Now, what's going on in the AM class? I can just see the black windscreen headers in the background suggesting that they are heading towards us. And it's Andrew Porter that leads from... Angus Archer in the AM category, fighting over 14th and 15th places overall, and they are separated by nine tenths of a second. So they are back to as they were, I suppose, in the race earlier on, where they had a really good battle between the pair of them as to who was going to lift top honours in the AM class. So there's the 996 of Jim Bryan. He's fighting away with the overall champion from last year, which was Paul Simpson, at the wheel of his Rint Racing Prepared number one car. So here they come, nose to tail through McLean's corner. 996 ahead of Cayman. And then as they dive on the brakes and turn their way in towards Coppice corner. Looks as though Jim Bryan has still just about done enough to hang on to the place. Still got the fight going on also for sixth place. Chris Dyer hanging on to that. Bill Cayley not that far away. And then just off that is... 
going to be the car of Pete Evans, his Dayglow car. So those three cars come up towards Redgate Corner, having completed lap number seven, on to lap number eight. And have we had a shuffle in AM as well? Now, have we got a car that hasn't got a working transponder? Because all of a sudden, no, we have. I think we've had a change in the AM category. Yes, we have, because there's and, uh, Angus Archer. And behind him now is the number 44 car, the white car with the black and the red flashes to it. That means that Andrew Porter has lost the lead of the AM category. And it's now going in the direction of the number 70 car of Angus Archer. So through the old hairpin they'll go. So you can tell them apart because of the black windscreen headers. Trying to work his way back through the order after his problems on lap number one is Ed Hayes at the wheel of the light blue Porsche Cayman. So he's a little bit out of position in reality. He's down in 16th place. Trying to work his way through the order. And we also now have got very much a fight on for the lead of the race because Mark McAleer, a bit like he did in the race earlier on today, getting quicker as the race wears on. And he's just set the fastest lap of the race we've seen so far. 1 minute 14.352 from the chasing number 14 car in second place. He's got Simon Clark just ahead of him, who claimed three Class 1 championships back-to-back -back over the course of the 2020, 2021 and 2022 championship season. But Mark McAleer is no stranger to winning in this category as well. He claimed his first C1 championship in the Class C1 back in 2007. That's how long he's been racing in it. So through the Kinkert Schwantz curve, up towards the braking area for McLean's corner reigning champion ahead of former champion and into the pit lane I'm afraid comes Brian Richardson I think he retired in race number one yes he did lap, lap two he retired in race number one he's quadrupled the amount of distance here it's lap number eight where he's retired this time through but the battle is certainly on for the lead of the race isn't it? two 997s going at it Mark McAleer hounding Simon Clark for the lead of the race through the Robert chicane they'll be heading on to lap number 10 this time through the lead advantage was just five tenths of a second at the start of the lap. It's now four tenths of a second at the end of the lap. As they come over the start-finish line, the fight is on. And Jake McAleer in the background can't really catch up with them at this stage. Uh, by the look of things, that'll be a change, won't it? Because that now means that Paul Simpson, the reigning champion, proudly carrying the number one, is now through and ahead of Jim Bryan. So the Cayman goes ahead of the 996. So that's up to ninth for Simpson, down to 10th for Brian. And just behind those, I think there's another battle that we've got at the moment as well, the yellow number 26 car, which will be David Burke. He'll be fighting away with Julian Morris at the wheel of the number 10 car. So everywhere you look, there is somebody to have a squabble with. So 24 cars took to qualifying this morning. And I think they're all largely there in this race or started the race at least. Anybody that had a problem in race number one, I think, was able to join the grid for race number two. Chris Dyer is still there in sixth place. Bill Cayley would desperately like to try and get inside the top six. He finished seventh in the race earlier on, so he's fed up with seventh place, but that's where he is at the moment. He can't quite find himself inside the top six. And this is also for position as well. This is for 11th and 12th places, isn't it? So David Burke, who's been racing 9-11s, more recently in the 9-11 challenge last year has got trying to draw himself alongside Julian Morris and Julian Morris has got the inside line and should be able to squeeze his way through yep so through goes Julian Morris gains the place so the 997 goes through and ahead of the Cayman so place gain there and then for David Burke the next car will be the light blue car of course which is Ed Hayes who is still trying to make progress following his problems going through Schwantz curve and up towards McLean's corner on the first lap. So through Coppice corner, lead battle still continues. Simon Clark still as yet has not yielded from the lead of the race. Seven tenths of a second was the lead advantage between himself and Mark McAleer at the start of this lap. Now both lapping similar pace to each other. Simon Clark on the previous lap did his best individual lap of the race so far of a 1 minute 14.37. Mark McAleer's overall fastest lap of the race is a 1 minute 14.35. So, and in fact, he's just bettered that. He's now just done it in a 1 minute 14.33, has Mark McAleer. 1 minute 14.337 for Mark McAleer. 
They didn't even get into the 1 minute 14s to that degree in the race earlier on. A 1 minute 14.6 was the best that we had as an overall fastest lap of the race in the race earlier on today. And that was two laps from the end when Mark McAleer was really, really starting to push hard and had not long, I would imagine, taken up the lead of the race at that point. Well, at the moment, he hasn't led a single lap in this one. Simon Clark has led them all, but he did struggle towards the end of the race earlier on today. Doesn't look as though he's struggling quite to the same degree. But Mark McAleer is looking strong. Side by side down through the Craner curves. That is going to be Paul Simpson again, isn't it? Fighting away with Jim Bryan, who's found his way back past him. So, uh, and I think Paul Simpson, yeah, is trying to reassert himself back into the position that he's just lost. But I'm afraid Simpson's back down to the bottom of the top 10 again once more. Jim Bryan's gone back through. Can he hang on to it? He certainly can as they head round through McLean's corner. Paul Simpson tries to work hard to get a, an undercut on the way out, but I think the tail end of the came and just reminding him that there's only so far you can push the Pirelli. It's a good tyre, but it can only take too much punishment before it starts to remind you the fact that, yeah, it's overheating a little bit. Good little fight, that is, between those two. And then we'll have had a shuffle here, would we not, as well? No, we haven't. Pete Morris in fifth position, still in the shadows of the car of James Cayley. Subtle difference on the Cayley livery of James's car this year because it's it's not gold and green, it's more cream and green this year. It's not white, it's more of an off-white, isn't it? Cream coloured. Well, he sits there in fourth place. Pete Morris, the man from the West Midlands, there in fifth place, gets a good exit this time coming out of the old hairpin. And he's going to see what he might be able to do for the lead of the race. They've now got traffic to deal with. Past Jason Brown's car, which they meet the Boxster just in the right place to squeeze through so it doesn't compromise either Simon Clark or Mark McAleer. So the two of them still together. Less than a Porsche length between the pair of them. Mark McAleer is not going to try anything in towards the braking area for the Robert Chicane. He'll sit behind. He'll try and see what he can do, work out where he might have an advantage. So they remain in the same order as they come over the start-finish line. What was a five-tenth of a second gap comes down to a three-tenth of a second gap that time through. And that is now 13 laps completed by the leaders. Jake McAleer is a long way adrift now, four and a half seconds adrift as he sits there in the final podium spot. Now the top three that we've got are still the same top three as we had earlier on today, but they are in a different order because Simon Clark leads. He was second earlier on. Mark McAleer is second. He was the race winner earlier on. And Jake McAleer, who is third, was third earlier on. Now the last three laps on the trot, Simon Clark has been slower than the car that's hunting him down. Not by much, but it's going the right way as far as Mark McAleer is concerned. And the Wilson's Auctions supported car in second place is looking for an opportunity here. Some glinting off the cars. May well be that there's a bit of visibility issues if the drivers haven't got tinted visors. Just that they might be able to struggle to see a little bit because the sun is so bright coming down the start-finish line. And, of course, down the back straight as well. Now there's more traffic to deal with. There's a bit of a moment there, and that's gathered up by Paul Simpson, who had been fighting away, hadn't he, with Jim Bryan. He's going to lose a place there as the light blue came and Ed Hayes goes through. And now he needs to get on with it, otherwise he might lose a further place to Julian Morris at the wheel of the black and almost Kermit the Frog-coloured car, such as the, the green that's on that one. Now, down in towards the old hairpin. Four tenths of a second is the lead advantage. Traffic just up the road, which will be Jessica Wilkinson, that the race leaders will be bearing down on before too much longer. And then once they catch Jess Wilkinson, might not be that much further before you then catch Shiraz Khan, and then you'll catch Darren Labet, and therefore every time you just catch another car that you've got to deal with. So they're just coming up towards Jessica Wilkinson now. Now, will they catch her on the run down in towards... The Robert Chicane. No, I think they'll catch her afterwards. And has also now Mark McAleer managed to prise the door open because he had a good run coming out of Coppice Corner. I think Simon Clark is just sufficiently far ahead, so McAleer will have to tuck back in behind once more. And thankfully, as far as Simon Clark is concerned, they're going to meet that traffic on the start finish line. So Jessica Wilkinson will see them coming. She moves out of the way. Simon Clark goes over the start finish line, still continues to lead the race. Mark McAleer still tucked in his Pirelli wheel tracks as they head 
now for the 16th time round through Redgate Corner. That little bit of traffic's been dealt with. What's the next bit they need to deal with? Well, I think it will be the number 15 car of Shiraz Khan, but he is the best part of probably about another five seconds up the road still at the moment, so they're not going to meet him anything other than towards the very tail end of this lap or the start of the next one. But Shiraz Khan is lapping about 1 minute 20s. The race leaders are lapping about 1 minute 15s. So up towards McLean's corner. Simon Clark looking to try and make it a likes to flag victory, but Mark McAleer, as he did in race number one, other ideas really. So through Coppice, they're not going to meet the traffic on this lap. They will catch it probably down towards Redgate Corner at the end of the lap. And for Simon Clark, as we say, he can't afford to get hampered by the traffic. He ideally needs to try and get through and ahead of the traffic before a corner and leave Mark McAleer to have to deal with it after a corner and at least keep a, a back marker between him. Self and the car behind for a period of time. Down through the Craner curve, that's Paul Seagrave, I think it is, at the wheel of the car. And he has got behind him the number 52 car, which will be Darren Labette. So that will be fighting over 17th and 18th position, those two. Just three tenths of a second separating them. Paul Seagrave getting the hurry up and just doing his best first sector that he's done so far, actually. So he knows he's got to push. And also knowing he's got to push, and he's pushing past Shiraz Khan to make sure that he gets the back marker dealt with, is our race leader, Simon Clark. So up towards Coppice Corner. They may well squeeze the lap that they're on and two more thereafter because they're lapping around about 1 minute 15s at the moment and they'll be over the start-finish line with more than a lap time left on the clock still. So they should be going on to their penultimate lap of the race this next time through. And Simon Clark has led so far every single one of them, but the lead margin is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It was hovering around a quarter of a second when they started this lap. When they conclude it, where is it going to sit? Because Mark McAleer is still almost there. He's not quite in a position to try and attack on the run-up towards Redgate Corner this time through. He's too far away. The lead advantage comes out a little bit, so it's now 0.37 of a second. You could hear Simon Clark there on and off the throttle a couple of times as he was trying to get the car settled into the corner. And now as they turn their way through the Craner curves, they'll be on to their last lap of the lap that last lap of the race next time through is there any more traffic that they need to deal with I would have thought probably not actually because Shiraz Khan was about 14 seconds adrift of Darren Labette and I think the rate of close probably means that they won't quite catch him there was a problem there and that was Pete Evans that must have had a problem coming through the Robert Chicane telltale sign of a car going slow and dusty sidewall suggests that he's had an issue and for Pete Evans he was running in 10th position now, right, here we go, up towards Coppice Corner, as close as he's been so far, Mark McAleer. He is almost within touching distance now to try something. Now, I don't think it's going to happen down in towards the Robert Chicane because he was quick going into Coppice, but probably lost a little bit of momentum on the way out of the corner. A quick exit here out of Roberts could help him, but again, I think Simon Clark just has enough in hand. There is that traffic up the road that I was talking about, which will be Darren Levette fighting away with Paul Seagrave. Uh, for 17th and 18th position and could that come into play at the end of this lap we'll have to wait and see I think probably not I think they're just about going to run clean all the way towards the end of this race potentially without any further traffic to worry about so for Mark McAleer time and opportunities are running out and for Simon Clark he'll be just hoping and praying that there's no further traffic to deal with and that he doesn't miss a gear snatch a break run wide because they're heading up towards McLean's corner for the final time, sun glinting off the cars in what has been a, say a cold but beautiful day here at Donington Park. Now, has Mark McAleer got anything else in reserve? He was quick last time at this part of the circuit. Simon Clark knows he's quick because he just covers over to defend the inside line should anything happen. Now, this is the key. Get cleanly off this corner, and it looks as though Simon Clark is still just about going to lead. Mark McAleer is not alongside him. He's going to have to sit behind him going in towards the Robert Chicane, and Simon Clark is just going to make sure he covers off any potential move that's coming. If he's clean off the corner, he should be good for the win in round two of the Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli, and he is clean off the corner, up towards the chequered flag for the final time this weekend. 
Simon Clark claims the win from Mark McAleer in second place. So they reverse the positions from round one of the championship. Jake McAleer makes it another podium in third position as he was earlier on today. And then it should be James Cayley that will finish in fourth position just ahead of Pete Morris who finishes in fifth place. Chris Dyer should come through in sixth position. Or has he been pipped on the final lap? No, Chris Dyer does come through and finish in sixth place. Bill Cayley in the green car is going to finish in seventh position. Eighth place should be Jim Bryan, who will finish in eighth place. And for the AM category, it does look as though Angus Archer is on course to secure that as he heads out of Coppice Corner in the wheel of the number 70 Boxster and in towards the braking area for the Robert Chicane for the final time. He had to work hard in that race to try and claim the win. Not quite as hard as he had to work for in race number one, but it's going to be a double AM class win for Angus Archer, who comes through to take the jacket flag now. And second in the AM class should be Andrew Porter. Here he comes now with the black car and its red and white flashes up towards the chequered flag. He will finish in 15th place overall. So it's a win apiece. A win in race number one for Mark McAleer. A win in race number two for Simon Clark. And I would suggest that these are two drivers that are going to be fighting it out for the overall championship as they were pretty much for a good chunk of last year when we saw... Simon Clark appear in the championship. Let's confirm the results then for you following the second race of the Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli here at Donington Park. It's a win for Simon Clark from Mark McAleer in second place by just four tenths of a second in the end. And a little bit of drift of those was Jake McAleer who completed the overall podium. James Cayley was there in fourth with Pete Morris in fifth and his teammate Chris Dyer completed the top six. Bill Cayley was there in seventh place. Jim Bryan was the first of the 996s home as he finished in eighth position. And despite problems on the first lap, Ed Hayes recovered to finish in ninth position ahead of Julian Morris who completed the top ten. Then as we move outside for the top 10, Richard Baston was there in 11th place with David Burke in 12th. And in 13th place, that Porsche Boxster of Angus Archer was the first of the cars home in the AM class. Pete Evans was next up in 14th place with Andrew Porter finishing in 15th place. Paul Seagrave, Darren Labatt. And then uh, problems for the reigning champion, Paul Simpson, who had a spin, amongst other things, and finished in 18th place. Shiraz Khan was there in 19th and Jessica Wilson completed the top 20. And then as we move outside of the top 20, the last of the cars to finish was car number 56, Jason Brown. But there were problems in that race for Brian Richardson, who retired into the pit lane. And problems for Jamie Callender, who had the spin. And his car is still stricken out with the marshals up at McLean's Corner. So that's it. We've had a brilliant day's racing at Donington Park. And we'll do it all again in just a few weekends' time when we head to Brands Hatch and the Grand Prix circuit on the 18th of May for our next two races in the Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli and the Porsche Club Motorsport Am Championship, also in conjunction with Pirelli. Celebrating 40 years of Porsche Club Motorsport, thanks for joining us here at Donington Park. We'll see you next time out. Goodbye.